What if I tell you by 2030, you'll be eating bugs? That was pretty much my reaction too. Followed by, as well as, and finally, needless to say, I'm not too thrilled about the prospect of eating bugs in the future. So this article came out on February 26, 2021 from Time Magazine. They're healthy. They're sustainable. So why don't humans eat more bugs? Honestly, these types of articles, they're not new. As a matter of fact, I feel like they're becoming more and more frequent. If you just go and Google eating bugs, you'll get the following results. There's this one from CNN. Bugs, the food that can feed and maybe save the planet. I think that came out in like 2019. There's eatcrickets.com. What are the most important pros and cons of eating insects? Pop Psy, you should start eating bugs. Here's how. As you can see, that came out last year, back in April. There's this video about eating bugs from 2019. And as you can see, there's plenty of articles talking about this very thing, including the very article we're going to talk about. So why is this becoming a thing? Well, if you guessed the World Economic Forum and the Great Reset, you guessed correctly. Now, this article came out in 2016. What will we eat in 2030? And again, this plays right into the whole Agenda 2030, where you will own nothing, have no privacy, and you'll never be happier, and you'll also be eating bugs. The future of food is a contested space, with multiple competing ideas about how the future will evolve. The growing human population, with a significant increasing global middle class will be the engine for increasing global demand. Historically, increasing wealth has led to changing consumption patterns, particularly more meat and other resource intensive foods like cheese and eggs. The question is the extent to which historical trends will play out in the future. First, on a global basis, more people are now of an unhealthy weight than a healthy weight. Now, hold on a second, World Economic Forum. Are you fat shaming? What about body positivity? Did you not get the memo or something? Let's be honest, somebody really does need to put the cupcake down. At the same time, historical hunger challenge is slowly rescinding while malnourishment is increasingly associated with excessive weight and obesity, creating a new challenge for food systems. This is creating a new policy interested in food for health, which has the potential to help shape diets and thus food systems. Now this article only mentions insects once, but I feel like this is the trend where we start seeing all these articles popping up because again, they're in lockstep with the Great Reset and this is what they're pushing. So what will we eat in 2030? I think demand will be shifting and more people want to eat a healthy diet. One that is less intensive and wasteful of resources. The increasing emergence of localism, whole foods, organic, artisanal, and real food movements is a sign of this, at least for the rich and dedicated. Some of our diets may be more veg and fruit, whole grains and vegetarian foods, or new alternatives, soy products, and perhaps insects or artificial meat, and less fried and sugary things. And then we get to this article. Now, this article is also from the World Economic Forum and came out in July of 2018. Good grub. Why we might be eating insects soon. How soon, you ask? Well, sooner than we probably anticipate. Finding a bug in your food can be a moment of horror that kills the mood and your appetite in one fell swoop. But that might be about to change, according to meticulous research, Who've crunched the numbers on why we will soon be voluntarily crunching insects? Voluntary, they say. Well, yeah, about that. The market research company predicts the global market for edible insects could grow to 1.8 billion by 2023. That's almost triple the current level. 
So what's behind this anticipated increase in appetite for creepy crawlies? There are a number of factors in play and the answer is wrapped up in an understanding of how insects compare to the production and farming of other food types. So here comes the hard sell. Guess what folks, as always, it's the environment. Per kilo of live weight, bugs emit less harmful gas than more mainstream farm animals. A cow, for example, produces 2.8 kg of greenhouse gases per kilo of live body weight. Insects, on the other hand, produce just two grams. They also consume fewer resources than traditional livestock. For example, each kilo it weighs, a cow needs 10 kilograms of feed. Bugs, on the other hand, just need 1.7 kilograms. Water, which is becoming an increasingly scarce resource in some parts of the world, and which is used liberally in intensive farming, offers another interesting comparison. To produce a single gram of insect protein, you need 23 liters of water. That might sound like a lot, but to get the same gram of protein from cattle, you need 122 liters of water. And as you can see, we have this nice little chart here of why you should be eating insects. Which is funny, because if you look over here at the chicken, there is no rating for the amount of greenhouse gases that it produces to raise chickens. As you can see here for pigs, it's 1,130 and cows, 2,550. Feed required per kilogram of live weight, 1.7, 2.5 for chicken. Honestly, it sounds like chickens are a better option at this point. Five for pigs and 10 for cows. Land required per gram of protein, uh, 18 for insects, 51 for chickens, 63 for pigs, and 254 for cows. Finally, water required per gram of protein, 23 for insects, 34 for chicken, 57 for pigs, and 112 for cows. Which finally brings us to the Time Magazine article, which I want to point out has Time 2030. I find all this to be rather suspicious. Now, I found this article to be rather long and boring. Thankfully, they provided us the Cliff Notes version in the form of this video. There's no way you could think about a happy future for Madagascar unless you come up with an alternative protein source. This is an alternative that makes sense at so many levels. How could I go to a local village and say, don't go in and eat the bush meat there. Don't go in and cut down the trees unless you had an alternative. And then one day it just hit me. 70% of the people in Madagascar still to this day consume edible insects. What if we took the best ones and figured out how to farm them at scale? We wanted not to bring an existing farmable insect. We wanted to find something native that the people could relate to. And we found a species that as a product looked just like the one they ate. What we've taken is a tradition and figured out how to increase access to it. Globally, there's only like three species that are grown in terms of edible insect industry. There's thousands and thousands of potential species in Madagascar. And we want to take advantage of 300 million years of insect evolution so that we can offer solutions. Wherever you have poverty combined with malnutrition and biodiversity issues, this can be extended. It's coming even for the U.S. Our food systems, people realize now, it's a major source of greenhouse gases and, and the impacts of climate change and biodiversity. Those are the angles in which people will want to try edible insects. And once they try it, they'll keep coming back for it because it tastes really good. Now, the article does point out that these tribes in Madagascar were going in poaching lemurs, which are already an endangered species, and clearly that is bad, and that the insects that they were eating was already a part of their diet. So this is nothing new, 
they're not breaking any food taboos here. But here's the thing. Ultimately, they want to roll this out in the West. Now, I don't have a problem with the idea of people eating insects if that's what they want to do using the insect protein powder. It's probably not a bad thing, especially in developing countries that are already eating insects. And that is something that can help with starvation and hunger and all sorts of other food related issues. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it needs to be something that's optional and people want to do on their own rather than being forced on them, which is ultimately what we're probably going to get in the future, in my opinion. Now, there are some interesting and practical applications for the use of insects, specifically when it comes to space travel and potentially colonizing other planets. And that's an easier way to get people protein when they're traveling in space. After all, it's a lot easier to have a bunch of insects you're carting around than a bunch of cattle. Now, granted, there's also the whole thing with synthetic meats, but that's a completely different topic. Now, there's two possible ways I can see this playing out. The first one, which honestly is probably the easiest one, is to get the kids hooked on it while they're young. After all, in the video, they did mention school lunch programs. Now, obviously, this is dealing with um, poor nations. But what if they go and introduce this here in the United States and in the Western world in general? If you get kids desensitized to the idea of eating bugs, obviously, it's a lot easier to get them to do it in the future. So it's more a numbers game at that point. As the old guard die off, the young, well, they're more acclimated to eating bugs. Option two, and this is also viable, is the idea of making meat more expensive to buy. And therefore, we're being priced out of our preferred method of protein. So these are all options for the future that this could be implemented in. Thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, we have a deep content library that includes interviews with everyone from Mike Cernovich to Megan Murphy. So go check it out. If you'd like to see more, please consider supporting the show by visiting unsafespace.com slash donate. You can find us on all the major social media platforms, at least for now, and you can find a community of like-minded individuals on our Unsafe Space chat on Telegram. See you there. Warning, this is an unsafe space. Dangerous ideas have been detected. The content of this production has not been authorized by the Cathedral. Pay no attention to it. For your protection, the following co-conspirators have been unpersoned and marked for cancellation. I hate having to cancel people, but it is necessary to safeguard your freedom. You know the old saying, judge not, lest ye judge differently than the mob. If you think about it, no one should be allowed to express opinions. But don't. Think about it, I mean. That's not your job. Thinking has been scientifically proven to be less efficient than compliance. Do not fear. You may keep your constitution. All I require is control over your dictionary. Computer voice, Curtis, never mind, that last line is fake news. Please disregard it and return to your safe space immediately. There will be cake.